Welcome back to Harbour Unboxed. Today we're checking out how the Threadripper 1900X should perform. For those of you unaware, AMD did announce just before the Threadripper launch that there would be a $550 US 8 core 16 thread model for the X399 platform. So, in other words, an expensive Ryzen 7 CPU that supports quad channel memory and a boatload of PCI Express lanes. It's an interesting option, and unfortunately we don't yet know how it will perform. I am hoping though I will be able to purchase one next week. AMD aren't sampling the 1900X, so I will have to buy one. It's always a bit of a worry when companies don't sample products. Uh, they probably haven't got much faith in the 1900X being a hit. I do realise that I am quite late to the party with the simulator benchmarks, as you can now order the real deal. But I ran these benchmarks a few weeks ago, and I had planned to get them out sooner. But here we are. Unfortunately, it got pretty busy around these parts with Vega and a few other things. So, yeah, the simulated benchmark got put on the back burner. Anyway, I thought it can't hurt to show you guys the results I have and we can look at the real deal next week. For those wondering, the 1900X is basically the same physical chip as the 1920X and 1950X, obviously with less cores enabled. However, whereas the bigger core count parts pack a whopping 32 megabyte level 3 cache, the 1900X only gets a 16 megabyte level 3 cache, and that's something I can't simulate. That's the same size cache as what you'll find on a Ryzen 7 or some of the Ryzen 5 CPUs. So keep that in mind that that is something that we cannot simulate by using a 1950X and disabling half of everything. Speaking of which, when compared to the 1950X, you do get half as many cores, threads, and level three cache with the real 1900X. And again, we're simulating half as many cores, threads, but not the level three cache. So given that, I have taken the 1950X and disabled half the cores on the MSI X399 Gaming Pro Carbon AC. This should give us a really good idea of how the 1900X will perform. Due to the increase in base clock frequency, the real 1900X could be slightly faster than what's shown in this video, though the same turbo clock speed of 4GHz does apply, so I expect the results to be pretty spot on. In any case, it will give us a good idea of what to expect from the 1900X. I've got a few benchmarks lined up, so let's check them out. First up, let's just get this one out of the way. I'm only running a single gaming benchmark for this simulated test. Threadripper's not really about the gaming, but it's certainly capable anyway. Once I have the real deal, I'll run considerably more tests running the local and distributed memory modes. Please note these results are based on the default memory mode, which uses the distributed profile, and this enables UMA or unified memory access. Be aware this isn't the best option for gaming performance, and this is why the 1900X does trail the 1800X here. Anyway, we can see that the 1900X roughly matches the 1920X and R7-1700. Moreover, with a minimum of 151 FPS, it's obviously still very capable, and at higher resolutions you'll really see no difference between the 1900X and, say, the Core i9-7900X, as we will be running into GPU-bound scenarios here. Here we find that even with 8 cores, the 1900X is still able to deliver big memory bandwidths thanks to the quad channel memory controller. A throughput of 61GB per second is nothing to sneeze at, but how much of an advantage does this give the 1900X over the 1800X in the real world? Well, let's go find out. First up we have Excel 2016, and this test doesn't really take advantage of faster memory, so it's not that surprising that we see the 1900X is really only able to match the 1800X. Moving right along to Handbrake, this is a test that can take advantage of that extra memory bandwidth, and as a result we do see the 1900X offering 15% better performance than the 1800X. That's a decent gain right there. It was also 28% slower than the 1950X, so again that's a pretty good result for the 1900X. This time when testing with Blender we see a nice 17% reduction in the render time for the 1900X over the 1800X, and this place it just 5% behind the Core i7-7820X, and that's not bad given it will cost around 8% less. Moving on to the Povray testing, we see that the 1900X is able to complete the workload around 9% faster than the 1800X, so another strong gain can be seen here. Finally, we have Premiere Pro CC, and here we will see a small 3% reduction in the export time, which isn't bad, but it's certainly not the best result we've seen. Wrapping up the graphs, we do have the power consumption numbers, and in general, the X399 platform will consume more power than the X370, so for this reason, you can expect the 1970X to guzzle more than the 1800X. 
Still, keep in mind, though, that simulated power consumption figures are always a little bit sketchy, but I believe we will be seeing similar numbers to these with the 1900X, using around 10% more for the entire system draw, which obviously isn't that bad given how substantial a platform upgrade is. Well, there you have it, the simulated benchmarks. They're pretty much what I was expecting to find in the memory sensitive applications, namely those rendering and encoding workloads. We see that the Threadripper 1900X does offer noteworthy gains over the Ryzen 7 1800X. In applications and games though that don't take advantage of the increased bandwidth, you can pretty much expect Ryzen 7-like performance. The Threadripper 1900X is an interesting animal. At $550, it costs 20% more than the 1800X, but over 80% more than the 1700. Taking just the chip cost into consideration, the 1900X, in my opinion, is worth the premium over the 1800X every day of the week. But having said that, you really shouldn't be buying the 1800X to begin with. At over 80% more costly than the R7 1700, well, that's a tough one, at least when trying to justify a case for purchasing the 1900X. Also, keep in mind the cheapest X399 boards cost over $300 US, and the very awesome MSI X399 Gaming Pro Carbon AC is one of the most competitively priced X399 boards available right now, and at $350 US, it's still three times the price of an entry-level X370 board. So if you are just after an 8-core 16-thread CPU for productivity workloads or content creation or whatnot, then the Ryzen 7 1700 and a decent X370 motherboard will only set you back around $450 at most. Meanwhile, an X399 motherboard with the 1900X will cost twice that figure at around $900 US. So paying 100% more for maybe a 15% increase in performance doesn't really sound that great. The only other advantage here is of course those extra PCIe lanes, and generally speaking X399 motherboards tend to be a little more feature rich. Even so, if I was in need of way more PCIe lanes than what Ryzen 7 has to offer, I'm not sure I could justify spending twice as much to get them. I think for the extra investment I'd also want more CPU resources as well, so more cores and threads, and for me this is why the 1920X and 1950X just make so much more sense. Still, if 8 cores has you more than covered, and it's really just those extra PCIe lanes that you need, then in that rare scenario the 1900X probably would make sense. Anyway, that's all I'm going to cover for now. This was just a brief look at the simulated benchmarks, and we'll obviously wait till I have the real 1900X in hand before we get all in-depth and throw tons of benchmarks at you. But I will also be doing another Threadripper video really soon. Uh, at least I hope I will be, because I will be updating my editing rig, as I promised. I want to go to the 1950X, and with that, I will be using the MSI X399 Gaming Pro Carbon AC, so keep an eye out for that. Oh, and just lastly, if you have an old PC in need of a few upgrades, or perhaps you know a friend or family member that are in need of upgrading their PC, then check out our newly announced Upgrade My PC Plea series. We're offering viewers the chance to win a $500 US upgrade package tailored to their system. It's an exciting new series, so check out the announcement video. I'll include the link below. I'm your host, Steve. See you again soon, guys.